Ladies and gentlemen, we're live on Segi TV, coming to you heart, from the heart of Dubai, UAE. Before we proceed on to the main event, we have a special guest performance. Please help me welcome a multi-platinum award recording artist, all the way from Staten Island, New York, it's CJ! This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge sanctioned by the U.S. government. Dubai, make some noise. We here. Let's get it. Okay. Dubai, make some noise. Let's turn up one time. Drop that shit. Let's get it. Shout out the Legacy it's Box so over here. Look, look, I, I think, think they feeling my pop down. We on top, top now. now. I'm on the strip with the top down. Put your, your bitch, you give me top now. now. I, I got to stick to this block now. now. Huh. You just shot down. How does the game is now? now. Hey, I, I cannot can stop now. She, she yelling out, she want to fuck with a wolf, bitch. I feel like we hitting my phone like baby come do me. Hey, we making a movie, she wanna pull up and give me the best so I'm counting the pesos, I gotta stick to the cheese like guess so. Then we making a mess so wait, slide. She says she feeling a vibe. I told her jump in the ride. She say I'm one of a kind. Wait, slide. She says she wanna get high. I told her baby I'm bringing the guys. Then we have a nines. I think they feel on my bob now. We on top now. I'm on the strip with the top down. Put your bitch give me top now. I gotta stick to this block now. Huh? You get shot down. How does nigga get this block now? Hey, I cannot stop now. I cannot stop now. yelling out. I cannot stop now. Wolf the legacy boxing we outside dubai i love y'all appreciate y'all Ladies and gentlemen, I'm stood here with Platinum, multi-winning award artist, all the way from Staten Island, New York, it's CJ! Yo, CJ, man, 
Big fan of your music, bro. I'll be listening to you since day one, man. It's a pleasure seeing you out here live in Dubai on Segi TV, bro. Out of all places, I wouldn't have thought I'd bumped into you. But I heard you out here. You're recording a new music video, man. Can you tell us a little more about it? Man, I love Dubai, you know. Shout out to everybody from Dubai. I appreciate all the love. Shout out to Legacy Boxing. Shout out to Sheikh Abdallah. We here. I love Dubai. I'm coming here every month, I swear. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for having me, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, Ralty, award winning artist, please put your hands together for CJ. brought you by Legacy Sports Management in association with Gino Maidana Promotions. They're proudly supported by Dubai Sports Council and Core Sports World. Your main event of yeah. the evening is sanctioned for 12 three-minute rounds in a men's cruiser weight 200 pounds boxing division championship matchup. This event is officially sponsored by BreeCoin and the upcoming NFT project Simbaverse. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Your main event of the evening is a title defense. Sanjay for 12 three-minute rounds in a men's cruiser weight 200 pounds boxing division matchup. As always, bringing on first your referee in charge of the action, the man by the bell representing Italy within the ring is Ressi, ref, uh, referee Giuseppe Quattrore. Please help me welcome, as we bring our first into the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, all the way from the Czech Republic, it's Basil Duta. Basil Duta, make no mistake about it, is a, is a capable fighter. Ten wins, four defeats, and one draw one of those defeats as i mentioned earlier was against chris billam smith who was commonwealth champion at the time but went on to become british and european champion as well and he gave him a good tussle for the wba continental over 10 rounds he lost it wide on the cards in the end didn't get quite as much credit with the judges as i felt he really deserved another defeat came against dmitry kudryashov another against alexei egerov kevin lorraine these are good fighters those four you look at them they are European level fighters. I got the whole block pushing, they can come in shape. And I think he's capable of really pushing Perez here myself. He's boxed one since that fight against Bill and Smith, one in Czech Republic last October by third round knockout. He's done quite a lot of sparring with Maris Breedis as well. He fights out of Cuba. Please help me welcome Mike Perez. I was so hard hit at that first. 
Well, Perez has had a very interesting career all the way through. Cuban professional fighters, by definition, have to have had because it involves leaving their homeland if they want to turn pro. He was a world junior amateur champion way back in 2004. He's had 400 amateur fights, but he defected to Ireland in 2007 with the help of Gary Hyde. He was alongside the likes of Luis Garcia training with Nicholas Cruz and Andes. It was a massive, massive culture shock. He was then with Abel Sanchez for a bit. Big, big wins at heavyweight against Magomed after Salomov. But it was a tragic evening because after Salomov suffered terrible injuries and I'm not sure if Perez ever really got over it. He was put in with Carlos Takam just a few weeks later. He wasn't really ready. And then lost an eliminator against Brian Jennings. Disappeared and then returned at Cruiserweight. And he's not boxed all that much in the last few years either. The talent is, has always been there. Physically, though, we don't really know how much is left. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached your main event of the evening. Your main event of the evening is sanctioned for 12 three-minute rounds for a title defense in the men's cruiserweight 200 pounds boxing division championship matchup. Your three judges represented here tonight ringside are Judge 1 from Belgium, Michael Marxitu, Judge 2 from Germany, Rene Feibeg, and Judge 3, Oliver Breen from Germany. And when the action begins, your man in the ring representing Italy is Giuseppe Quattaroni. All this action will be overseen by the head official and the WBA supervisor, Thomas Putz. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the main event of the evening? <laughs> now, nah, I said, Dubai, UAE, are you ready for the main event? <laughs> and now, this is true. The moment you've all been waiting for. Coming to you live and exclusively on Segi TV from the fight capital of Dubai, UAE. It's time to knuckle off and let the fist fly. Reintroducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands 190 centimeters, weighing it officially at 90 kgs, 100 and 98 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, he enters the ring tonight wearing the white trunks with red trim. All the way from the Czech Republic. Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Apanovi, Boyonik, Czech Republic, Zaprahi, it's Vasil Duta! <laughs> and introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, he weighs it officially at 89.6 kg, coming in with a pro record of 25 wins, with 16 of those big wins coming in by way of knockout and only three losses till day. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of Cuba by way of Cork Island, please help me welcome your reigning, defending WBA Intercontinental Cruiserweight Champion of the World, the Rebel Mike Perez. So final preparations for these two before they're called to the centre of the ring. Perez of the two is the one with the real pedigrees, box the world level. That win against Abdus Salamov, draw against Takam. Narrow defeat to Bryant Jennings. There was a point deduction which sunk him late on basically. Without that he'd have got a draw and Jennings then went on to box Vladimir Klitschko for the unified titles and Perez went to Moscow, took on Alexander Povetkin, got stopped in 91 seconds. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our fighters are ready. This is a title defense for the WBA Intercontinental Cruiserweight title. Referee Giuseppe Guartatoni will now be giving his final instructions to the boxers. Luca Perez, you know the rule. I want a clean fight. Okay, good luck. Top two gloves is scheduled for 12. Perez's WBA Intercontinental title, ninth place ranking on the line here. He always looked like he was carrying some weight as a heavyweight at cruiserweight. He looks spectacular. He went into the World Boxing Super Series. Met Maris, Maris Bridis in the quarterfinal, which wasn't a great draw. He was chosen by Bridis, in fact. Came to an end, and, and since then he's been very, very inactive again. So he's not really boxed that much at all as as a cruiserweight over the last few years. Starting off in the Southpaw stance here. At 36, he looks in pretty sensational condition. I was just looking at his calves. Oh, his leg. That's the first thing I was thinking. The size on his legs are massive. Because he's come on southpaw here, Perez. Dusas just a little bit tender with the jab, isn't he? And committing with the Nasal and just Perez to get way too close too early. to do so on there a little bit. Because he looks slightly skittish. Trying to get that jab going himself there, Big Sock. And I don't think it's the like you said, I don't think it's the power. It's not knowing where the punches are coming from. He needs to just get a little bit of success for himself. Get that foot on the outside, try that right hand through the middle. Again, it's the, it's the advertising logos are causing a little bit of a problem tonight. Nothing too bad, but as Barry pointed out earlier, a few fighters have just felt their front boot just disappear underneath them a bit. What you can do is fight at this pace. No press, just collect himself and you know, pick the targets, pick the spots. You've got to make him fight at a high pace. Make him rush his work. It's the last 30 seconds of round one. They're all interesting stories, Cuban pro fighters, because obviously they have to make that treacherous journey out of Cuba. It's far from easy, but there's a thing up in the west of Ireland around Cork. Just, it's one of the best ones, because what are the chances of that? It's a Caribbean island to the west of Ireland, and it's beautiful, the west of Ireland. I've been there myself many times. So didn't have a car out there, and it's basically walk everywhere. He fought twice in the same night once, early in his career, over in Ireland. I'm not quite sure how that managed to happen, but it's been quite deep, it's been quite the journey. And a good start to the round for him as well, for the first round, good start to the fight, I should say, the first round he was dominant, and was a few good hooks as well, and just, I, don't, I don't think Dusa really felt that was worried about the power, but he was worried about where the punches were coming from, I think he panicked just a little bit, and, and then again, because of that salt ball stance of Perez, took away Dusa's jab and he was... Um, trying to be reactive and just not quick enough. He needs to take the initiative if he can away from Perez, which is easier said than done, of course. Cubans always have fantastic timing, and that's one thing that, that sets him apart from most of the amateurs. It's interesting when he reappeared at Cruiserweight because he's been out for so long that when you first saw him, you, you didn't recognise him. Yeah. It, was, it was as simple as that. He did carry weight as a heavyweight. You could see that. He's got to cram a lot into that. 14 stone, 4 to make 200 pounds, but he did it. He 
did it yesterday. So into the second, they're scheduled for 12. Perez in the black and silver, Dutsar in the white with the Czech Republic colours down the outside of the fires there. Lovely job there, Perez. too long. Left hand there for Perez, who's going after him a bit here. Just buckled the legs here to do so, I think. That left hook. Even though he was on his terms, Sio Perez has slowed down because he had to work at the pace. Even though he, he, he up himself, I don't think he can really ever work at the pace. Yeah. This is the question, really, isn't it? At 36 and making that weight. Making that weight. <laughs> 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 too much detail. He's always trained hard, people told me. He's a good trainer, he works hard in the gym, but maybe hasn't always done what he's supposed to do outside of the gym. There's a problem here. There's a cut on the forehead. Just on the corner of the eye, I think, on the corner of the right eye, and the referee... I'm not quite sure what the referee did there. He stopped it. Oh, cool. it was a clash of heads, or something, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 On the top of the, on, on the side of the head there as well from there. There is, I think. There is, I think, in the hairline. Yeah. 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 Towards this side of the ring, to the left side, because there's a supervisor table, and maybe just that it was a clash of heads, but we couldn't really see. There's anyway. No, there was another clash of heads, and Perez, I don't think he's cut Perez, but he fell back as well. That's good. That's quality. Solid left hand there from Perez. Dusar. Dodging in a little bit of kilology there. To just to maybe get through a couple of he did. Overreaching there now, Dusar. Look, again, the panic of the cut. It's going to help Perez. Yes, yes. Like, with a good timing he has. Second, second attack. This is difficult for Dusar. It really is. This has been a tough round. Tough couple of rounds, actually. Great round for Perez, that was really was just really turned the screw second by second, didn't he? Again, because he's allowed to fight at his own pace, he started off quite fast in the round. He, took, he had to take a little foot off the gas for a bit, didn't he, just to regroup. And then once he sort of clashed heads or something happened, maybe an elbow, he seen the blood, it sort of put a bit of more fire in his belly, and he turned to screw again, and Dussard was under a bit of pressure there in the end of the round. He was, they just hurt, I think. It. Just working on it. And I think you're right, it's the, the damage, of, of course. It doesn't look too bad because it's running clear of the eye, but overall, the accumulation of it, he's... he's He's suffering a bit in there at the minute. Seconds out. Seconds out. Seconds out. Come on, come on. So into the third. Blue corner just a little bit slow getting the, the stool out there. We just confirmed it with the referee, it was, a, it was a head clash that caused that cut, we thought it was, but you can never be absolutely sure, left hand to the body there from Perez was just slightly short. But the fluency in his move of Perez, fantastic isn't it? Maybe another well, clash there, yeah. another clash there, which immediately put the glove up to his left eye, Dukes are encouraged by that now, he looks to try and climb into him on the ropes. But he couldn't commit to the attack because he's blinking on the right eye, That's, that could still bother him. <laughs> Just a lovely, great combination from Perez, led off with the right hook and then a short left hand. I think he got too close with that left hand actually, because he sort of had to push through it. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes. Good, good. 
And again, heads coming together again there. Bucks against Southpaw. And I wouldn't say either one of them is really doing anything wrong. Do so, you have to blame him for that because he did the head. Not intentionally, as goals, but he's still ducking the head low. That has to be him. It's good there from Dusha. Good those little one-twos. Step out. Takes a shot, man, doesn't he, Dusha? Does. Does against Philip Smith in this into hard old fight that. Tough fight. Thinking again there, they'll do so. I don't know what we'll have some of the clash. I think so. I think that Perez is cut. He's got some damage around his left, hasn't he? I think kind of on yeah. the eyebrow on the inside, but it's more of a, a scuff, I think, than a cut, maybe. Because that's not a good place to have it, but it doesn't seem to work. Good body work there for Perez. It's the final minutes of round three. It is, he's having his say here, Dutsa. He's losing his rounds, but he's having his say. Knocks him back in towards the ropes there. Perez just shifting to his right, looking for the right in behind the elbow. Duke Sorry again, just yes. firing back. As you said, he just fires back, he's just won't want to load up full control, will he? Grunts of effort there from Perez as he's putting his punches together, so end of the third. And it's been good stuff this so far. Raises a right glove there, Duke Sorry as he goes back to the corner. He does look a little bit weary. He's been on the receiving end for the most part, but you, you do also have to just raise the question, as we did earlier, how long Perez could keep this kind of work rate up for at the 36. We don't know the answer, but Dutzar needs to find out. He needs to take him deep enough to find out. But Dutzar walked back, back to the corner after three rounds, like he was round 15. He did, he did. He looked absolutely shattered. And you don't, you don't want that have to use all your resolve this early in the, in the fight, you know, that will to win, that, you know, that, that, that fire thing that you have to pull out all that, all that second wind, whatever you want to call it, in round four. That's the worry. But yeah, but you're right that with Perez, you know, he's had to fight at the pace, and even though he's sort of dictating it, he's leading off, he's still fighting probably a little bit harder than he does. It's a nine with the WBA, Perez, the champions, Arsene Goulamiri and super champion, and Rihal Murhi regular champion is it too sick moved up and relinquished all those titles it's been an interesting scenario not to Coley with the WBO of course Ricardo BC champion right hand into the body that's all single shots all being Perez. Welcome back with another one. And there is Perez, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. 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 Yeah, really good, yeah. Duke Solent span off to his left. I think he sort of fainted with the right hand, didn't he? Almost sort of like went low and come over the top of the left hook. I'm not going to get caught. He's just waiting too long. Yeah. 
pretty slow with that there, do so. Good left hand there through the middle from Perez. Slugging from low. Final minute of round four. Oh, the left hook there. Well, right hand was a bit low there, but Perez didn't make anything of it. But again, this is another passion round. This is another tough, tough round, and it's Dutsa who's been on the receiving end of it for the most part. Yeah, and now one shot, is, it, now one shot, do you think? Oh, he's going to fall over, but it's just energy sapping work, isn't it? So he gets into position, isn't it, Perez? Last ten seconds around four and eighteen rounds has been yes. the same, really. Dutsar is gradually bit by bit kind of just done less and less as the round has gone on and Perez is breaking him down, basically. And maybe that point will come earlier in each round as we as we progress. And and because every shot Perez throws is a thump, they're thumping shots in it, so so Dusa can take them theoretically all day. There's no snap in the shots to really Perez to to, to to wobble or worry, but everything's thumping and hard, and they're, up, and they're coming behind the guard as well, so they hit you on the tempo. All those shots, they just they just you know, demoralising. And that's the panic he had in the first round or two, where he didn't know where the punches were coming from. And now he's sort he's sort just tucking up, waiting for, waiting for it, if you like. And, he's, and what, he's, what Perez does so well, because he counters pretty good, just making you second guess before you throw your punches. So Dusa is waiting too long to throw any, anything of any substance and then getting picked off himself. Seconds out. So into the fifth. Perez with everything so far, he's won those opening four rounds. Dukesar just, just dips a little bit, looks for the jab into the body. He's sticking to his task here. That's all Dukesar. See, look how long he waited wait too long until he got close enough for, for Perez to hit him. So he's not making use of that long reach. And that's just because Perez took away his confidence in those early rounds. Onto him and tries to get something done on the ropes here. And he does need some success to encourage himself, basically, yes. Dutsa, because otherwise he's just going to get broken down bit by bit, and that's how it's going to feel, and it won't be a good feeling. But as you say, the problem he's got is that if he looks to be too expansive, then that's where he could be in trouble. But yeah. it's a decision he's got to make, isn't it? At some point, you have, yeah. It's easy to people say just go for it, because it's still really in the fight, but. Use that second bottom rope right to, to spring out of danger. Go, 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 go. One, one, one. Distance, Felix. One, one. One, one. Distance, Felix. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he Again, he knows Dusa's going to get too close for He knows Dusa's going to walk into him. Just know he's going to come to me now, so I'll just wait and wait and wait. I'll wait him out as soon as he takes that step. It doesn't matter where he's throwing, because I'm inside his body frame now. I'm in, I'm in there. His punch is coming outside of me and I'm mean coming inside of him. Again, this is the prime example is when he's looking, he's looking for headshots, just whacked out like that in the body, in his chest, anyway. Just feel, get, and mentally, you feel something connected. I mean, got Perez theoretically where you think you would want him, and he's not going to do anything with it. I was happy just to have back to the ropes in this final minute of the round. Perez maybe just thinking a, a little bit of a rest, knowing that this is another one that he's 
that it's one and Dutra, as you say, is, is reluctant to, to really engage because when it does, it can be quite painful. So five rounds in and it's difficult to see what Dutra can do to really turn the tide here, to be honest. Well, you've, got to, you've got to try and get Perez tired, which is proven to be a hard task, but he's trying to walk him down. But he's not letting his hands go. And, and the more tired he becomes, the more he's getting hit, the more tired he becomes, the less likely he is to, to let his hands go. But to stop that movement, you've got, if you've got a guy who moves his head so well as Perez, just hit the body, the chest, anywhere from, from, the, from the belly button up. Just stop that movement. And you'll feel better because you're hitting something. And, that, and that'll be a mental thing. That just, you, know, sometimes you need a bit of success to spur you on to get that bit of a second wind. But he's, at the minute, he's having limited fleeting success. And even then, it's not having a, an effect on Perez. So it would seem. Five down the schedule for 12. <laughs> he looks exhausted. He really does. So into the sixth, Mike Perez in the black and silver. He's got a, a wide lead here. He's won every round so far. Vassal Dutzar of Brno in the Czech Republic in the white. Let's try and get on the Little go. Go. One man, go. <laughs> really, the hope is that if he hangs in there, Perez will begin to tie. But whilst he's dictating like this, that's probably not going to be the case. He's got to try and take something out of his tank. But then when he does try to be a bit more ambitious and, and do that, kind of plays into the Cubans' hands. Really, there's a really dominant ability between the two. Just look at their resumes to, to see that. And he can only really bridge it through sheer heart here, Dutra. And sometimes that's just. Not quite enough. Uh, and also, while you're trying to get him to, to work hard, you've got the white hook there from Perez on the ropes, and again. And turns in. It's a nice uppercut from Perez. And easy, and easy. Go for it, go for it, focus, focus. Blinking off. The blood's coming yeah. freely. They've done quite a good job with that, actually, for the, first, well, for the previous couple of rounds, but it's a problem again now. Blood's going straight into the eyes. He backs up and takes a huge gulp of air there, dude. So, and I think the left, I think the, the left eye starting to close a little bit as well, which is going to be a real issue. Great shot. So the winter round six here. And once you get beyond halfway, once you get to eight, maybe if you're the corner, you've got to look at realistically whether he's got any chance of winning the fight because he'll be seven or eight rounds down. And, there's no suggestion that he's capable of knocking Mike Perez out. I'm not saying you stop it now because there's still a minute remaining in round six, but he wouldn't have to let it go too much further than this, would not, you? Not even needs to go under their shield, that's for sure. It's that point at which continuing serves no purpose. That's what you have to, that's what you have to identify. They're big guys, so one punch can change it on, on a sixpence. We know that. So he hits him with a big right hand now, and all of a sudden, you know, Perez is, is tanking. He's in once Perez, once Perez is tired, he can't do anything. All that movement's gone, and, and he's in trouble. But right now, uh, there's been no evidence of that. Uh, two seconds hit him and hurt him. And Perez will still be economical, but he's, he's flying and having fun, as the smile would suggest. He's, he's enjoying himself in there, showing us the skills that he's. Always had world junior champion back in 2004, as I mentioned, and then just three years later, he's making a move. Yeah, Strong left hand, just knocks Big Side back in again, but that's Lincoln back with that right tie. Final few seconds of round six, so nearly at the halfway point here. That's a clean sweep and clear. There's no argument at all in any round. He's had, he's had a, a, a fleeting success in, in a few rounds, but no, that round was nothing. He didn't have no, there wasn't one positive for him to take up that round, except that he'd seen the end of the round. He didn't take a hammer in that round, I don't feel, but it's just accumulation of punches that was just draining his energy more and more. That's exactly what's happening, and it's why I kind of just raised the, the debate, the question of, of how long you would let this go on for. I, I wasn't suggesting that they stop it now, but just once you've got to eight, 
I think then you've got to start to think because it's just whether there's any real possibility of your party being able to turn it around. And like you say, this is cruiserweight, so one punch, yeah, as we know, it can change everything, but the likelihood of it is very small at the minute and it's only getting smaller. Yeah, you've got to give him that rallying call, like, you know, this is it. You've got to make, you've got to make the effort, maybe, I don't know. But you know you're fighting, how, how he boxes and stuff, but... just looks so relaxed. <laughs> Loose. <laughs> Body shot there from Dusa. Nice left hand from Dusa. <laughs> See what Perez uses the ropes for movement as good as anybody. He leans on to defend. He uses a springboard as well to attack sometimes. And he uses as a, as a leverage to get out to, out back into the centre of the ring. So the combination there. And then just ran out of the corner. Good right hand there from Dusa again. He's having a better round actually. He is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Perez likes to conserve energy, but he needs to do a little bit now, I think. Yeah. Nice combination there, the one two. Yeah, but the last thing he wants to do now is, is give Dusa a little bit of hope and confidence yeah. if he can nick around or go, 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 no, doesn't really feel like, uh, any pressure in this round or get, get frustrated because you're, you're not really hitting him with anything hard. Picks a good few punches there though. Just off the ropes and then a little bit of goading of his opponent. Because Perez has allowed it to be fair, but still, you know, he's still making the effort. As you say, he did definitely take his foot off the gas that round, Perez, but Dixar so kept coming forward, kept working hard, and that will do him a lot of good. It will give, for his morale, that will that will certainly help. It will, what won't help, though, is he just grabbed Perez on the neck at the end there, and that might just anger him a little bit, and he might have the pace in this, in this next run. Yeah, but that, he took a round off there, Perez. Maybe he needed it, I, I'm not quite sure. I think he, I think the last you want to do is give anyone in this in this game, if you're taking away someone's confidence, don't give it back. You don't need, he doesn't need to give it back. He doesn't need to do much more to still dominate the round. Or so the previous six rounds would tell you that. Seconds out! Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that was big. <laughs> so into the eighth, and I think in that seventh, Duke Sars probably got himself on the scoreboard. Perez definitely won those first six. He did still get home with some nice, crisp, sharp punches. Perez in, in that round, and sometimes when it's a fight, it's the best round, it's tempting to give him a round, even if he hasn't quite won the round, but I think he might have that round. Yeah, I thought it was beautiful. Something we were talking about a round or so ago. He sits on that second row to the bottom, second bottom row, doesn't he? But technically, he's going below the body, he's going below the waist, he shouldn't be allowed, with his head. 
That's good though. Do you know what's good idea? Just take a little step to the side there, didn't you? Threw it from almost on the shoulder there of Perez. Nice body there for Perez. He's looking to really sit down on that left. I fell down there, my left hand. He got that really square there, too, sir. Again, you can't throw single shots against him like Perez. You've got to throw in combinations. Perez there boots off, goes his right, then steps off to the left, just trying to switch up the angle a little bit. Perez again, still quite happy in this round to pick his punches. The punch output isn't as high as it was in the first half of the fight, but he's controlling this round. <laughs> Again, he's not hurting too sad, but it just, he made him feel like he was having success, made him walk onto that left hand then. They slip aside a single shot, three fours. You, 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 might, you might make a miss with three, you'll hit with one. That's exactly what happened there, wasn't it? It was a four five punch combination, the third one, the left hand got through. <laughs> it's kind of interesting this for Perez. I think the boots are as pretty as you can, but he's sticking to a task here. But Perez is taking his foot off the gas. And why has he done that? wonder to yourself I wonder to myself because through six rounds it looked to me if he'd gone the other way just up to the but he could have got the stoppage he could possibly have got the stoppage of the corner might have begun to think about it it's why I raised it as a as a subject but he's some people can go through the gears I mean you can you know, as clever as he is so so you have to do it in the gym if you want to do it in the ring so you imagine how brilliant he is how clever he is so for all his flaws how clever he is so when he spars he probably dominates by just making you miss all the time so if you're not forced to fight the really high pace in the gym, then you theoretically it's very hard for you to do it, almost impossible to do it in, in an actual fight scenario. So that's why they get sparring patterns in that make you work out, but he's so clever that they probably can't do that. Because he's probably the best most clever boxers are better in sparring than they are for fight nights. That's the truth of it, Bo pure boxers. I think with so he'll coast through, he'll coast through anything as long as I'm doing enough. I think with athletes generally too that the gears are what you kind of lose as you get older as well. It's, it's that explosivity and ability to accelerate and, and, and up everything that I think does, does take a lot of you. He's 36 years old now, but it's, it's a good performance. He's, he's won every round but one, and he looks comfortable as you would like him. And everything is just... Everything he does looks good. The fluency in his work is a rhythm to his punches. That's good from two sides. Good work. Square to the ropes there, Perez, with his arms just stretched out and long the ropes. Bit of arrogance there from the Cuban. Still. He knows, he, just, he knows he's massively in charge. Like, he has no worries at all at the minute. And so he feels. Thank got through there from Dutsa. And, and ultimately, with someone like Perez, you've got to hurt him. That's the truth. Tape, I think, just trading for a wrist there. The referee's managed to sort that out himself. Left glove of Perez, that was. Midway through round nine.
do so. No, he's there now. Take that little step to the left of the room there. Jab over the top. If you hit, it doesn't matter. Throw the right hand to the chest and throw the right hand right to the chin. Back to us, but we can see that the head snap back, we can see the effect of it, we know it's landed. That's fatigue setting in, that is, I think. We'll do so. So with the head back, going back, then we've got a good shot. Perez needs to turn the screw right through. I think he does. Yeah. People in the crowd want it. And, and you see this with Cuba fighters sometimes, it's something they're reluctant to do. It's been a frustration with Rigondo for, for forever, basically. Yeah, they, love it. they, they, coast they do enough. It. They yeah, do enough. Yeah. Get the fight in the bank and then they just coast down the stretch. Richie sat next to his boss. Next to Dave. He sat next to a person who's made a living. Not as good as he's, of course, but. Yes, I am. Again, there, final he looked knackered after, after three rounds, and I mean, and slightly sorry for himself after three rounds. But he he did, he, it was a real trudge back to the corner, yeah. wasn't it? After three rounds, and he didn't look completely steady. He looked like he was getting broken down and beaten up, and I could see him lasting much longer than halfway at that point, maybe seven or eight, something like that, but. He's, he's kept going, kept going, kept going, and, and Perez, as we say, has has eased off a little bit, but yeah, but he, credit due to the blue corner here. He up the pace a bit there, Perez, a little bit, but I think he needs to do it more. I think he can be, I think he can push, if he can push Dusa backwards, I think he can, then I think he, he can get the finish. Well, he's got that WBA Intercontinental title, he's defending that tonight, he's a nine with the WBA, Arsene Goulamirin. I don't think he's boxed for really quite a long time now. He's the <laughs> super champion. Yeah, it's late it? 2019, yeah. isn't it? And Rehad Murphy, the, the regular champion. And we've, we've gone through the other fighters in the division. I mean, Seconds out. Can, can, he, can he win a world title, do you think? I think ability wise, just. I, I'm not sure about attitude wise, maybe, or whether. Uh, uh, the, you know, do you know what I mean? The fact that. You feel like he's had Dusa on the rails for if, if it's not in your arsenal, if you haven't got the power to do things, then it's fair enough. But it's it's in him to do it. And be it, he doesn't feel that he needs to. And I think that sometimes for the, to get over the line, especially these big guys, you might have to have that little bit of a I might I can coast at some point, but I gotta get you over the line. I, I just wonder if, if some of it when he's gone down there, dude, so I think claiming that he was hit low, was he? That was strange. All of a sudden he was he was rather dramatically down to a knee. I really don't know what happened unless it was some kind of injury. Some kind of twinge in his knee. He didn't really did anything as far as I could see if he did, he did it very, very quickly. And if he's taken a chance and just given Dutes are one low there, then he's a silly, silly boy yeah, because he can get disqualified for that if you're not careful. That's a prime example. Why would, why would you cause the fight? You know what I mean? If something silly like this happens, and then well, he's been given time by the referee here, so I can only assume it was a low blow. We couldn't see it. Strange. What I was about to say was, I wonder whether the experience he had against Magomed Abdusalamov all those years ago, now back yeah. in 2013, is still. A, it's still an issue because they got him back in the ring 11 weeks later. I did that fight as well against Carlos Takam, and he was gun shy. You could see he was. Point deduction, which is everything that you would expect. It's all the referee yeah. can do. And then against Brian Jennings, he, he went the distance. He was definitely up at halfway and then let the fight get away from him in the second half. It's, Stays with you that kind of thing. What happened with with Abdul Salamov? It was a bruising, punishing fight. Man, it really was. No, he's going to work now, though. Looks like it. <laughs> look at the, 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 the good he can be. Though. How effective? How, 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 how aggressive he can be? It's almost you got to get him in the corner and poke him with a stick, isn't it? Like ang make, ang get him angry. Go, go, go. Some don't don't like give, him, give him water. 
some fighters are like that, aren't they? It's a good shot. Tough to say, isn't it? Yeah. It's very, very tough. Big left hand again there from Perez, and he just takes a step off to his left there, Duke, so finds some open space, sucks in some air. Two more rounds to go after this. This is what I was hoping I'd see him do in round seven, having laid all that groundwork in the first six rounds. Anybody's job there from Perez. And he's in trouble, dude, so you can see it by the way that he's backing up. He's really feeling these. The heads come together again, but Perez isn't interested, just closes in, digs his toes in, looks to let his hands go. Final few seconds, Dutsa ends up on his back. And I think it's exhaustion as well as much as anything else, to be honest, because Perez just went after him. He gave the point away. He was angry at himself for being such an idiot. And has pursued him, and you can see he's in trouble now, Duke. So he's very, very unsteady. And Perez could maybe get this done. I thought the end of the round was coming up, to be honest, but it's not been signalled. And Dutsar is in full on retreat here. Perez steps in, the referee's having a close look at this, and rightly so. Dutsar sinks to his knees again as he leans in and holds on. And they're celebrating, but they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. The corner are in the ring, and they shouldn't be. That's they need to, they that need is, to yeah, be careful. Out. Technically speaking, that is a score disqualification with the corner team impinging Ooh. on the ring there. And there is the, the end of the round. But he was dead on his feet there. Dutes are absolutely dead on his feet. The corner having a good look at him. There's two more rounds to go here, and... I don't know if they really need to send him back out for these two rounds, to be honest, I really don't. No, he's exhausted. But also, the, the problem is, though, he's two rounds to go, the, the ego of everyone involved. He's got a call of the ref. Yeah, the other corner, that's great corner work. Yeah, it's, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. He's, he's put up a, yeah. a hell of an effort there, dude, Sarin. And, and when Perez did step off in, say, round seven and eight, he still had the will and the desire to step on and win, and make, win that seventh, maybe yeah. even get a share of the eighth I don't know but it, they were his best two rounds and then Perez just stuck it on him in that last round as I said doing in the tenth what I was looking for him to do in the seventh and he's and he's got this one he's got this one done the referee calling these two to the centre while Perez is up off his stall and it's been waved off and absolutely the right thing to do from the corner because we were talking about it earlier all that awaited him there was if he could grimly hang on six minutes of terrible punishment he gets knocked out and he didn't deserve that that's what happens because because again there was nothing no, no one no one shot made him there was no one shot that he got caught with he thought oh that might knock him out but it just he, he was he's been exhausted from the third round on yeah and he's just the pure will to win perseverance you know, bravery training but yeah. fitness has, has sort of put got him through there but he was just taking a hammer on hammering he and was the harder he, and the harder he tried the worse it was becoming for him and that was just sheer exhaustion. He got caught with a shot, to be fair. But uh, yeah, the way he flew back, you know that's tiredness. They're just your, yeah. your feet can't keep your balance for you. Yeah, there was no strength left, was there? He didn't have the energy to put out a glove or turn a hip or do something to break his fall. He was just sprawled out. But Perez has got that done. And yeah, it's a good win for him. And, he's always and had the skills. We've always known that. He's had this odd stop-start career. He's continuing at cruiserweight, but. I mean, he's still a problem. 36, he's still a problem. <laughs> yeah. See, it's, you know what to do. You don't. You, you've got to make him fight at that high pace, and you've got to somehow hurt him. And that's theoretically it's easy, isn't it? Just run at him, throw lots of punches, and and no, but it's not because he makes you miss, and he, and he can and he got enough power to earn your respect. But he's going to struggle. Like you know, if, if someone like a Coley who's so massively tall, like he'd be clever enough to slide inside with the Coley. The Coley's crude, so he could get inside with the Coley and work away with him. He really could. But look at the accuracy in his work as well. And it just everything's fluid with it. He turns with his body every time he throws a shot. You know, and, he, and, he throws, and when he throws that uppercut on the left hand, he throws that right hook over the top, but it comes on the temple almost all the time. And that and their hard shots, you lose your balance, they you know the heavy handed shot. And every time he hurt he hit too sad, you just you just see the energy draining out of him ever so slowly. And he did well to last as long as he did, to be fair, he really did. Showed resilience, you know. Fantastic resilience. Completely agree. But completely agree. I know. Oh, you—you just got to make him angry in the corner, haven't you, Perez? Every time. 
He doesn't need the co he doesn't need economy, he needs a lion tamer. <laughs> That's what he needs. He needs someone to prod him a bit. Whip him, stick him with anything, like hang, make him angry. Yeah. And then, he, and then that's it then, because once he lost his temper, once he had the public warning there, and he was angry about it, he went to work, didn't he? He did. He In did. impressive fashion, Absolutely. to be fair. Absolutely. I sort of want to see him fight for the world title as well. I do. It's a fantastic story, because you think it passed him by, but, and it was his own fault. And it's like, it's like redemption for him. He can get it right the second time around, almost. Ladies and gentlemen, your main event of the evening comes to a close with your referee, Giuseppe Quartaroni, calling a stop to the action due to opponent retirement on the chair in between round number 11, declaring your winner by TKO to the Rebel and still the undisputed WBA Intercontinental Champion of the World, Mike so hard here today, friends. My brother didn't even believe in me. And ladies and gentlemen, Thank please you. give a round of applause for his opponent and the challenger who fought bravely all the way from, from Czech Republic. It's Vasil Duka. You should have never doubted me. I'm a work to my last breath. I'm a hustle to my last number nine ranking with the WBA and like Barry I would love to see him fight for a world title there's plenty of world champions at the minute in that in that cruiserweight division and you tend to think this the WBA route might be his best route for him especially stylistically for him I think it probably would be his best route but the, you know, we'll see but at least there he's yeah, there about he's close to it I think and it's whether he's marketable enough that's the problem with him I think but he got a good team behind him, you know, they pushed him early. This has been a standout win for him. And he looked good. I mean, he was never in trouble at all. Not once did he look in trouble. Not once, to be fair, not once did he look tired. He took his foot off the gas. But even then, he didn't look like he, like, like he needed the rest. He looked like he just chose to take the rest. I mean, Dusev tried to push the pace a little bit. He just did too much for him in every, in every shape or form. That, that was all it was. I was a real veteran with loads of ability, not quite finished yet. That's what that was tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you're reigning, defending, and undisputed WBA Intercontinental Cruiserweight Champion of the World, the Rebel Mike Perez. I came from the water, water. Every nigga in my gang got the blood. You fuck around, you must want a gang war. I got old girl in the transport. Seven is a heavy, I got Zan on my I'm out of the plane. The fan okay, I think we're about ready to catch a, a quick word with him. I'm a killer competition in the plane. You see what is different now from the kitchen. I turn everything in the sun now. You neglected me, you know you shouldn't have did that. They was coming out, you know you shouldn't have did that. You didn't recognize my trash and I did that. Now I find every day I won't get back. I just want to be the champ for the misfits and the one that was saying I couldn't do. I got angels all around me, yeah, yeah. I got love all around me, yeah, yeah. I'll be a fighter to the end, to my last breath. I'm a hustle to my last breath. I got angels all around me, yeah, yeah. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I am still here with the reigning, defending, undisputed WBA Intercontinental Cruiserweight Champion, the rebel himself, Mike Perez. Mike has just taken home another successful title defense with his opponent closing out on the chair in round number 11. Mike, that was a very impressive fight. Needless to say, we're going to ask you a few questions and we'll try and answer these systematically as we go along. First of all, I would like to ask you, what did you think of your opponent, Vasil Dakar? We saw him coming out. There was a couple of point deductions as well. You had the entire crowd on their toes, man. What was going through your head at that moment? Hey, um, first of all, I want to thank uh, God for giving me the opportunity to be here, a legacy for manager. Oh, my, my money and promoter Karim Akar here. And all the people that come and support me here around the world and back in home in Ireland. Um, what can I say? You know, I, I know he's a very tough opponent. He has fought for a world title. He has challenged for like this kind of belt before. Or he has fought 12 rounds before. 
Uh, I know that he was going to be a tough opponent. He never had been stopped, so I stopped him now. Um, I was prepared for whatever. I said in the interview before, uh, don't matter whatever he brings, I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first from Mike Perez himself. Mike, before we let you get out of here, I have one final question. What is next? Are you going to be taking a few weeks off, a month off? When can we see you back in the ring, man? Uh, that question is for this man right here. The big boss. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Kareem Akar, the CEO of Legacy Sports Management. Kareem, what is the next plan for the future of Mike Perez? Uh, definitely world championship. That's what we're looking for. That's next steps. We don't want to call anyone out, but you can name them. We're ready. And will we see you back here in Dubai? ASAP. ASAP. Ladies and gentlemen, Legacy Sports Management is due to return back in Dubai. One more time, please give it up for your reigning, defending, undisputed WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Mike the Rebel Perez. So Mike Perez will be challenging you for a world title soon. That was the word from the promoter there. And they'll be looking to get that done as soon as they possibly can and, and as discussed he's he's in that mix he's still got the the skills that he's always had they haven't really faded it's just whether you've got somebody out there who can push him hard enough hard enough and make him work at a pace that he really doesn't want to that, that yeah. that's the way to beat him as you've been saying but <laughs> you've got to pin him down you've got to pin him down and he and he's a, he's an absolute maverick and he and he was very good tonight he really was just uh, again, I keep saying it. How smooth he is with his punches and movements. So that, so even when he is busy, he's not wasting loads of energy. And and also he can make you miss it. And he closes the distance really good with the feet. You see it there. Like he's way far out. He's a shorter guy with a shorter reach, and he slides into the distance like like you haven't seen him. How does he do that? And what he did really really early with Dusa, he took away his jab. He, he, so as soon as he took away his jab. He was always going to play second fiddle. He really was, because then the shorter fighter can walk right up on you, make you miss with that fantastic head movement he has, the rolling, the rhythm of the shots. You can time him, and he's picking you a path every time. And, and even though none of, none of those shots were shots that were going to knock you out, they're heavy thudding shots that just drain your energy, empty your tank, and and they did empty his tank. To do, do so should have been finished by round five, to be honest. But by round three, he looked a sorry state. But he's so tough and committed that he went through it and he wanted to go on the shield and he almost did and luckily the referee did the right thing and the corner certainly did the right thing and and thought this is enough for you sir because you tried your hardest and there was no more that you could do but for perez i think you know, he took his foot off the gas but that was his choice i think he had more energy in him and i just honestly feel that he could challenge for a world title